Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to continue our uh, portfolio review session and looking at a portfolio from a UX designer whose name is Julia from Boston. Before I jump in, just a quick reminder, again, I share um, everything about UX from interviewing tips to portfolio reviews and uh, design critics on my YouTube channel. So if you are interested, please feel free to hit the subscribe uh, to support my small channel so you won't uh, miss any of my future content. So uh, let's jump right in. So we are on the landing page of Julia's uh, UX portfolio. And from the quick, uh, just a quick glance, oh, I love this very neutral color tone and illustration overall. It looks very professionally done and has a, like a little bit like personality and note into the subtly like translated into visual language, uh, which is very nice. Um, so it starts with the header with uh, name, portfolio, blog, about, resume, and contact. Um, then it followed by this headline, Hi, I'm Julia, Boston-based UX designer and researcher. Um, one little question mark here, you know, uh, without knowing much details about uh, Julia's background, I'm guessing Julia probably had some work experience as both designer and researcher in the UX field. Um, however, like as a headline, this is always something I think that can be confusing for hiring manager. Um, so if you are actually planning to use this portfolio for your interview, um, I would strongly encourage you to think about what kind of roles you are aiming for. Um, if your goal is to get a job as a UX designer, uh, I might just remove the researcher in the headline. It's perfectly fine to talk about your background and experience from both sides um, at your interviews or in the about me section, but not in the headline, as this can create some confusion with two distinctive um, job professions. Um, then it goes into a little bit more detail. I'm a graduate of Human Factor um, Master's program at Bentley University, have more than five years of experience creating system solution in biotech healthcare and other industries. Very cool. Then it goes into project. Uh, looks like it's a layout of like a couple of cars and each one has like a uh, consistent visual language, which is uh, I think a very interesting approach rather than having the screen marks here. Um, so for example, the first one, a design of a data load tool. Okay. And then there's another one called expert review and usability testing. Okay, um, I think overall, like the label is not a problem and the visual language, the illustration is very consistent. It looks like very much following the same visual system, which is nice. However, I'm having a little bit challenge here to understand are those like UX projects or some might be research, for example, like expert review and usability testing, the second one, evaluation of experience of MATLAB drive on uh, mobile devices, just from the brief information presented here, uh, it looks to me that this might be a research project. Um, then it has another, some other projects here. For example, the last one, that voice user experience, a design of voice user interface for a virtual phone system. This is more straightforward, sounds to me like this is actually probably more of a UX design project. Um, so again, I think this might get tricky if your past experience like are eco eco heavily involved in both research and design. But um, for the portfolio purpose, I would prioritize the projects that are more or most related to the role you're looking to uh, get. So say, I'm just making this assumption, say if you're interviewing as a UX designer, I would move up the design projects at first and maybe have another section for research heavy focused projects. Um, if you want to combine them together, that's fine, but try to at least visual hierarchy wise, make it very super clear or using some label hashtag keywords, like to make it really clear for the hiring manager so they know which are the projects they should look into. Um, then it goes into this section with a very nice sketch of a little bit more about the designer. Transition into UX from a business system analysis role and software development, cool. And then it has a link to resume and more about me. This is excellent. Recent post, cool. So it looks like this designer has also been writing some articles where you can um, get from the link here to read more. Last section to get in touch. 
you can just quickly jump the message here. This is very handy. Um, and I think in terms of hierarchy wise, this makes perfect, uh, okay, it makes perfect sense to have this at the end. And I like that at the bottom navigation bar, uh, at the bottom of the page, there's also email, LinkedIn, resume, uh, and a map. This might be a link to the map, I guess. You know, some other helpful information is that if you want to get in touch with uh, Julia. So now let's take a look at one project. I'm a little bit hesitant to be honest because I'm not sure which one should I click into. Um, like what I we usually do, um, I usually like go more in detail for one project uh, and I usually pick the first one. So uh, here it looks like the first one is a design project. Uh, at it says the name is a design of a data load tool. So let's take a look. Cool. So we are now on the project page for supplier contract generator, a design of a web based utility tool to upload contract data to health rules payer system. Okay, looks like this is a design project. Uh, so let's continue. But one thing I uh, wanted to point out is I realized some inconsistency in the headline here. As here we are on the project page, it says supplier contract generator versus on the home page where we came here from, it says a design of a data load tool. Um, although this might be minor details, but I think this consistent realities really matter. As I tap into the project page, I had a few seconds wondering, oh, am I clicking into the right project? Is this taking me to a wrong page? Um, and I say red, it looks like, oh no, I'm on the right page. You're just using different language to describe it. But I think it is important to, if you want to make it different, uh, have a reason of why, but if not, um, having the consistent and coherent experience is always helpful. So it has like a high level summary first, project summary, project goals, my role and objectives mat. This is great. I think always helpful to help the viewer get a sense of what's your role and what are you trying to do? Like the project goal, design a solution for a professional services uh, representative to generate and populate supplier contracts into house rules pair system, I see. Um, sounds like this is probably a B2B project as the solution is for professional services representatives, if I understand that correct. Uh, I'm not sure what is house rules payer system means. And I realize this has also happened in the headline subtitle. Um, I think the design uh, of a design of web based utility tool. This is excellent. I, you know, you can see that Julia is trying to use a very simple, straightforward language to explain this B2B tool. Uh, but the second part to upload contract data to health rules payer system. Is it necessary um, to put health rules payer system here? Just a question mark here. Um, but I will leave it up to you just because I think, you know, this might be an helpful uh, if you think this is a very important system that you will talk and explain later. But my reason of doubting or questioning here is really for a viewer who's new to this project. This really doesn't mean anything to me. If you talk about, yes, what based utility tool I can get, I get an idea of what you're designing for. But the system, does it mean anything? Or should I know what this means? Um, you know, I think always try to use the plain language and last tag terms um, is always helpful for uh, portfolio purpose. Then, oh, I love this challenge. How might we create a tool for generating and uploading contract data that can be used without advanced technical experts, expertise? Sorry, this is great. And I love the visual treatment here that really helped this line of how might we, the problem we're trying to solve here stand out. And the language used uh, is also sounds quite clear to me, like create a tool, that's the word. Why? For generating and uploading contract data that can be used without advanced technical expertise. The only thing missing here is the who, but I think the who is kind of explained at the top here. Uh, but yeah, I think the who is a little bit soft in the line. Uh, but overall, I think this line of how might we problem statement is pretty clearly written. Um, then it goes into project approach started from discovery. And this might be like a, a picture of a whiteboard, I guess. Um, notes describing relationships with contract entities. Okay. 
analyze the initial project requirement, um, collect user people feedback of using the existing tool, and there's like probably a system flow. Um, together with the product manager, we define tasks and use cases for the target persona. Um, it allowed us a build a flow diagram to visualize the process and review it with stakeholders. Okay, one thing I'd love to know more is by doing this flow chart, what are some problems that you have discovered and how has that helped you in the next phase of design, of ideation? Um, then goes into ideation. Once I understood the user needs and tasks, I collaborated with stakeholders to brainstorm potential system solutions and started conceptualizing system screens. So this looks like a sketch uh, and a picture of the like whiteboard sketch, which is perfectly fine. Um, I use whiteboard all the time before I go into virtual and even these days, I, I tend to use paper and uh, uh, whiteboard a lot, physical whiteboard to generate idea and brainstorm. Um, then goes to prototyping. Okay, start with paper, then develop solution, early designs. Cool, so the designer started to show some uh, early designs. And what is this? The primary disadvantage of the existing tool is the complexity of the data conversion and contract generation process. This is great. The identification of what's the problem has been discovered for the existing tool and how has that lead to the next step? Like how has this designer approach the design from there. I think this really helped connect the story and help connect the artifacts we are looking at on this portfolio. Then goes to hi-fi prototype. Once